Now, uh, sentiment, certainly positive, uh, demand robust on the market. Uh, and, and traders are seeing we're now at, traders are saying that we're now at recovery levels. Uh, uh, do you see any macroeconomic uh, factors sort of affecting this upward trend we've seen so far uh, as we go into the second half of this year? Um, it's, it, it's an interesting indication, actually. Um, but I dare say with, uh, with all the policies and all the efforts of the government, um, there's every indication that there's some positivity. Perhaps, first of all, um, the stability of the Naira uh, says a lot to what's going on in the economy. Um, the, the inflation rate also being kept at the rate at which it is. Um, clearly, uh, the central bank wants to ensure that uh, tight liquidity situation keeps uh, the Naira at the levels at which it has. I think this translates into the kind of stability in the economy and then that also reflects in terms of the markets. Um, the growth over the, the 52 week period we're talking about, as small as it may be, is it's a positive sign. I guess even more positive than the 11% year to date we have. Mm. Well, Boyga, looking at the market, we're seeing the banking sector uh, dominating activity. Uh, do you see this sector uh, uh, continuing to sort of push the market up as we go forward into the second half of the year? Or uh, do you see uh, 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 other sectors? Um, we're seeing real growth uh, in the real sector. Uh, how do you, what, what exactly, what sector do you see sort of pushing growth on the market as we go forward? Well, um, the banking sector will certainly add some growth to the market. Um, essentially, that's probably where you have the most activity. Um, remember that there have been combinations in that sector uh, in the recent past, and uh, we're still expecting the nationalized banks, so to say, to come to the market. So it will always have a high volume of activity. But in terms of actual growth, in terms of actual value creation, um, you want to look at the manufacturing sector because that's the real sector. Um, so we're looking at the cement sector, the fast-moving consumer goods and um, other manufacturing companies. Now, these are companies where fundamentals always have to play a very, very significant role in terms of making decisions for investors. And um, where there is um, a take in terms of uh, performance, there will definitely be growth coming out of there. So clearly, once we see the manufacturing sector stocks uh, starting to move up, then we know the market is really, really starting to, to grow positively. Mm, well, Boyga, you also mentioned the FMCG sector. I mean, uh, looking at stocks such as Nestle, Nigerian breweries, you've seen them performing quite well. Going forward, uh, this sector could also uh, lead the recovery we're seeing on the market right now. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? It's, 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 it's certainly the sector to go, like I said. One thing about uh, the FMCG sector, right, you've got products that feel the impact of uh, the consumers and the general populace, so to say. Um, it's a sector that's very, very sensitive in terms of costs. Um, diesel costs will always affect cost of production, transportation costs for logistics and distribution purposes, energy costs will affect cost of production, and uh, buyer sentiments, consumer price resistance would also affect the ability to achieve turnover and revenues. So um, that's a sector that really, really has a thumb you know, on the feel of the economy and of the consumers. Mm. Well, going forward, I mean, I mean, I have to ask about uh, the recent problems we're having in our oil sector, of course, with the subsidy payments, uh, uh, the fact that we're seeing uh, some issues when it comes to energy power. How do you think this is going to impact on this sector, especially if it's meant to play a major role in pushing uh, the market forward as we go forward? Well, um, it, it is an interesting uh, problem that's coming up right now. Um, I, I want to believe the government's going to have, uh, have it under control very soon. Um, we need to have it under control because uh, looking back at January, we all recall what happened when um, there was a strike just because of the subsidy on fuel. Um, we don't want that happening again at this time of the year. It's going to cause um, something very drastic. We're going to lose out on all the gains. Um, but clearly, it, it's, it's also had that impact in terms of, I guess, the oil companies listed on the exchange. Um, it's more about watching how the subsidy um, probes and the trials come out at the end of the day. Um, is there going to be some money to be refunded? And um, ultimately, what sort of impact will this have on, uh, on the government budget?
Mm. Well, we do know there's some undervalued stocks also uh, on the exchange, uh, Boyega. What are some of these uh, perceived undervalued stocks? Uh, and of course, uh, would they attract any, any interest from portfolio managers and investors going forward? Well, I, you know, we, we've had a view of a particular sector and, and straight away that's insurance sector. Um, you'll notice yesterday one of the uh, most active stocks was, uh, was Sovereign Insurance. Um, had about 75 million shares moving there. Um, now that quantity did not affect the price. And uh, you, you can't but start to wonder um, why that is not reflecting in terms of value for the company. Uh, clearly I think that was a trade made by someone to take a position in there. Um, there are lots of stocks like that, undervalued companies with a lot of good potential. Um, it's just about having the right management in there and uh, the right management taking the right decisions. Um, if, I, if I can just step out of the insurance sector a bit, um, if you recall a while back, Cadbury was probably in a similar situation. And um, I did mention that Cadbury was one of those stocks where with a kind of restructuring in its management, it was bound to, to, to rise to its own level again. And we're seeing that now. Mm. But boy, get back to insurance stocks. I mean, what are your thoughts on what's going on uh, in that sector right now? We're hearing the government uh, uh, suspending some of these companies, a lot of reforms going on there. Uh, what are your thoughts on how this is going to impact on the sector going forward? You know, that, I mean, your question just takes me back to when um, the current central bank governor came in and there were all the shocks and trembles in the banking sector. Um, let's just consider it a clean up. Um, it's, it's, it's never too harmful. Um, the players in that sector just need to, to you know, tighten up their belts, um, focus on what the business is all about, um, see to the regulator in terms of making sure the industry is, uh, is clean, is uh, transparent, is, um, is, is accountable. And um, I, I think the only way is upwards for them thereafter. The, the, the insurance regulator is probably as concerned as some shareholders are, um, as to why there has been no movement in uh, prices. Um, practically all the insurance stocks are trading at par level at this time, and um, it's, I don't believe it's a good sign for that industry. Mm. Well, Boyga, then what stocks do you recommend going forward? I mean, you have mentioned the FMCG sector, but you also talk about the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, well, the, we, we've, we've got an interesting play in the pharmaceutical sector here because uh, typically you'd go over and talk about GSK, um, GlaxoSmithKline, you'll talk about May and Baker and Nemeth. Um, May and Baker and GlaxoSmithKline also have products that are essentially FMCG products. Um, they have still maintained their OTC and ethical drug production lines, but um, you know, we've still got those products that are pushing sales for these companies, and these sales are starting to reflect in their figures. Um, Nimeth, I do know, um, is planning on uh, bringing its own FMCG product into the market um, in terms of an energy drink. Um, so that's another stock that, to watch out for. Um, again, the, the war against fake drugs is being won um, as we speak. NAFDAQ, you know, is, is pretty much on top of that. And uh, I think people, a lot of people are also aware that they need to get the right kind of drugs. Um, so it's, it's, it's looking pretty interesting for, for the pharmaceutical sector.